Hi everyone and welcome back again to ASFC Chemistry where I'm taking you through how to balance some of the more complicated redox half equations using a technique that I like to call WEB. So we use WEB because it helps us introduce waters, hydrogens, electrons and double check for balancing as a way of seeing how one of these equations can balance and I can't emphasize enough that's going to be under acidic conditions. So let's have a look first off with this one. Now we're going to use dichromate 6 going over to chromium 3 plus ions and before I go any further, before I even introduce myself to this, I need to make sure the element undergoing redox is balanced and so the chromium, I've got two here, I've only got one there, I'm going to introduce a two. Now for this next bit then, going through these steps, B is kind of like an add-on at the bottom just to make sure everything's okay, should you have time in the exam of course. To go through all of these, you've just got to ignore the fact that things are being altered and things are going to change your balancing until you get all the way to the end, because otherwise it will really stress you out. So, the first one is waters, and we introduce waters to balance the oxygen atoms in our equation as it stands at the moment. So I've got seven oxygens in here, and I've got nothing on this side at all. So even though it does introduce hydrogens, which aren't anywhere over here, don't worry about it, we're going to introduce 7H2O over onto the right-hand side. Then, for H, I introduce hydrogen ions. These are our acidic condition, member, and I introduce these to balance out the hydrogens. So I've got 7H2O on this side here, so I need to introduce on this bit 14H plus in order to balance out those hydrogens. So as it stands at the moment, all of my hydrogens, oxygens, and chromiums actually balance. The only thing that doesn't balance at the moment is the charge. And since it's a half equation, it needs to have electrons, which is exactly what the E is for down here. The electrons help us balance out the charge. And the nice thing is, the electrons always go on the same side as the hydrogen ions. And so I know they're going here, I just need to make myself vigilant for how many I'm going to need. The goal is to make both sides of the arrow have the same charge. So since I'm introducing into this side, I must be bringing down the charge on this side from a positive, either to a less positive or into a negative, in order to match it to this one. This side at the moment is 6 plus, and this side, with these things considered, is 12 plus. So to bring down the left-hand side, I need to introduce 6 electrons to the left-hand side, and I have my balanced half equation just there which is actually an example of a reduction half equation. So that was it stepwise. Let me show you how quick you can do it when you get some practice. So for this one, we're going to introduce waters, hydrogens, electrons, and double check for balancing at the end if we have time. So this is nice and simple. I've got 4H2O being brought in on this side. I've got H, H plus just there. 2 plus overall over here. 8 plus and a minus over this side, which means I need 5E minus to balance out my charge. And it works. So it's really simple and it works for essentially all the half equations I've ever found that use acidic conditions and involve you introducing H pluses, H2Os and electrons. It's a really quick method and it balances itself as you make your way through the steps. Now the tricky one in the exam is what do you do and what do you do when you encounter, what method do you have when the exam question mentions alkaline conditions because at the moment of course this is only going to be a method that works for acidic conditions up here so do we just swap them around no we don't we extend our method down here and we add on an extra step and this i've only realized in the last couple of weeks if i'm honest with you and so this is something that i'm really excited about and i think you should use definitely in the exam all right, so let's have a look. So I've added in the letter D for this, so this is now webbed. And what we're gonna do at the end down here now, we're gonna change things. We're going to drown everything in OH minus. So we're gonna introduce these alkali conditions. We're gonna drown both sides in OH minus. And we do this to add enough hydroxide to each side to neutralize the H plus and cancel out the waters. So let's have a look at it in action. First off, I follow the normal web procedure. So for this, I check the elements of balance to begin with that are undergoing redox, which is the manganese. Then I need to introduce waters. So to begin with, I need to introduce 2H2O to the left-hand side like so. Then I balance the hydrogens, so I introduce 4H pluses to the left, to the, sorry, to the right-hand side. And then I introduce two electrons also to the right-hand side to make my charges the same on either side of the arrow. So that's a completely balanced half equation at the moment if it was acidic conditions. But in the exam, let's say it said alkali conditions. Well, you would do this, but then, as I said a moment ago, you get to drown over here. So it's add enough hydroxide to each side to neutralize the H plus and then cancel down the waters. 
So here's what we're going to do. You can see there's four H pluses here. So I'm going to write the equation again, but this time I'm going to add enough OH minus to completely cancel out and turn these into waters. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to have four OH minus plus two H2O plus the MnO2, which reacts to form the MnO42 minus 4H plus 4OH minus, and I'll just chuck them in here, the two electrons like so. So now what I need to do is I combine these to make waters. So my equation now is 4OH minus plus 2H2O plus MnO4, sorry, MnO2, reacts to form MnO4 2 minus 4H2O and 2E minus. So now you cancel down any H2Os you have. So both of these go and two of those go. So I'm left with two H2O on the right. And that gives me my final answer for the same reaction but under alkali conditions, which is 4OH minus plus the MnO2, which reacts to form the MnO4 2 minus 2H2O and two electrons. And it works. The whole thing is balanced in terms of charge, atoms, electrons, everything there works. It's absolutely crystal. And it means you can use the same method we use in lesson, which is the web procedure, and you just introduce the hydrogen ions and the water as normal, but then at the end, you drown it in OH minus, and you add enough hydroxide to this side, and that as well, so you add them to both sides. So you add enough hydroxide ions to each side to neutralize the H+, plus, and then you cancel down any waters, and it gets you the overall. Let me show it you one more time. So for this one then, so introduce waters to balance the oxygens, nice and simple. So I've got 3H2O. I then need to introduce hydrogen ions to balance the hydrogens. And so I've now got 6H plus onto the right hand side. To make my charges equal on both sides, I need six electrons on this side as well. So don't forget this is minus and that's minus. So these two effectively just cancel to make them the same. So I've got to that, I've done it my normal way for acidic conditions, but it's not going to work because the question's asked for alkali conditions. So, final time I'm going to say it, you add enough hydroxide to each side to neutralize the H+, and cancel out the waters following that. So, I'm going to rewrite this, and I'll do it in full so you can see it nice and stepwise. We've got 6OH- minus plus 3H2O, reacting with the Br-, minus, which gives you BrO3-, minus plus 6H+, plus, 6OH-, minus, and 6 electrons. So you can see here what I've done, because I had 6H+, pluses, I introduced 6OH- minuses to both sides, but now these here are going to combine together and make waters, which will cancel out with these. So I'm going to have 6 H2Os here, which will cancel out all of these H2Os, because there's only three of them, and leave me with three on this side. So my equation reads at the end, 6OH minus plus Br minus, which reacts to form BrO3 minus plus 3H2O and 6 electrons. And it works, once again. It's absolutely brilliant. You can give yourself another go for the next one. So the next one is going to use a slightly different version of this, just one more to finish you up. What I recommend you do is, let me write it on now, and then pause the video and have a go at it yourself. So the next one I want you to try, this has come up before in a past paper for OCRA spec. You've got CR 4 2 minus, and it's going to react to form chromium 3 plus. Now I want this in alkali conditions. So have a pause, have a go at it, and then restart the video. Now, as far as I'm aware, the specific question where this did come up was the old F325 paper, if you're looking up the spec online, and it was the 2015 paper. So for this then, the reaction itself, let's first off balance it in terms of our web method, so sticking to our typical method. I'm going to introduce oxygens to this side to make sure that these are balanced out. So I've got 4H2O to introduce over here. I've then got 8H plus to introduce on this side, and finally, for charges, I introduce three electrons onto the left-hand side as well. But this, at the moment, is acidic conditions, so I need to introduce this alkali feature. 
So I introduce enough OH minuses to get rid of these. But remember, I put them on this side as well. So I've got 3E minus plus 8H plus plus 8OH minus plus the CRO4 2 minus to get the chromium 3 plus the 4H2O and same as on this side here, 8 OH minuses were introduced. I introduced 8 OH minus onto the right hand side as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these together to get me 8 H2Os on this left hand side. These 8 H2Os are going to cancel out 4 from there, leaving me with 4 on this side. And so my overall equation, well overall equation, the overall I suppose of this half equation remember, because it still shows the electrons, I'm not getting rid of those, is going to be at the end 3E minus plus 4H2O plus CRO42 minus, which reacts to form chromium 3 plus and 8OH minus. And I'm just going to double check it, and yep, everything's absolutely perfect for that. So hopefully that gives you a really good solid method you can jump into the exam with. You don't have to tennis back and forth trying to balance things out. You've got a clear method. You're either following W, H, E, B with the B being balancing if you've got time. And if it's alkali conditions, it's webbed because you're going to drown both sides in OH minus. I'll leave you to the rest of the videos in the Redox or Transition Elements playlist. And until then, happy revising.